I'm going to go through this example problem where we use a hypothetical process to find the equilibrium pressure between two species. So the problem statement says, tired of studying thermo, you come up with the idea of becoming rich by manufacturing diamond from graphite. To this process at 25 degrees Celsius requires increasing the pressure until graphite and diamond are in equilibrium. And they give us some data at 25 degrees Celsius. They give us the change in molar Gibbs free energy between diamond and graphite, and they give us the density of both diamond and graphite. So it says estimate the pressure at which these two forms of carbon are in equilibrium at 25 degrees Celsius. So from the data given here, we know that it takes 2,866 joules per mole to change graphite into diamond at 25 degrees Celsius and one atmosphere. And in order for these two species to be in equilibrium, there will be no change in Gibbs free energy between the two species. So what this problem is asking us to do is essentially with a fixed temperature of 25 degrees Celsius, we need to find a pressure, equilibrium pressure, at which this is going to be equal to zero. Because a Gibbs free energy of diamond must be equal to Gibbs free energy of graphite at equilibrium. So I'm going to start this by defining dg by its fundamental relation. In this case, the temperature is fixed at 25 degrees Celsius, so in the definition of dg, the negative sdt term is going to go to zero. And we're left with dg is equal to vdp. Now I'm going to integrate both sides. So we're left with delta g equals v delta p. And in this case, we're working with molar Gibbs energy, so I'm going to divide through by total moles on both sides. And this is the final expression for the change in molar Gibbs free energy that we're going to need to use for the calculations in the hypothetical process. So like I said before, this 2,866 joules per mole is the Gibbs free energy change associated with the process of graphite changing into diamond at 25 degrees Celsius and 1 atm, and that G diamond minus G graphite at zero is the equilibrium condition. So I'm now going to draw up a diagram of our hypothetical process that will aid us in our calculations. This process of changing graphite to diamond has a certain change in molar Gibbs free energy associated with it, delta Gm but it's also equal to the hypothetical process where we increase the pressure of pure graphite to its equilibrium pressure with diamond, then continue to change from graphite to diamond at the equilibrium pressure, and then decrease the pressure back to one atmosphere when we have pure diamond. You'll notice that the change in molar Gibbs free energy of step two is gonna be equal to zero because at the equilibrium pressure, the Gibbs free energy of graphite is equal to the Gibbs free energy of diamond. So the total change in Gibbs free energy of the process is going to be equal to delta Gm1 plus delta Gm3. Now using this expression that we came up with earlier, I'm going to write the expressions for delta Gm1 and delta Gm3. In solving for Gm1, the molar volume that we use is the molar volume of graphite, since at this step there's only graphite present, and we're changing from one atmosphere to the equilibrium pressure, so delta P is going to be PEQ minus PATN. Now we don't know the molar volume of graphite, but we are given in the problem statement the density of graphite is 2.26 grams per centimeter cubed, so we can convert this density to a molar volume in meters cubed per mole. If you do the conversion, you'll get that the molar volume of graphite is 5.31 times 10 to the negative 6 meters cubed per mole. And in the conversion, this molecular weight of graphite is 12 grams because graphite is just carbon, and so is diamond. So in these conversions, the molecular weight that you use is 12 grams per mole. And in the calculation, I'm going to change the atmospheric pressure from atmosphere to pascals just to say consistent with SI units for the calculations. So if we take these numbers we can plug them in up here and get an expression of delta GM1 solely in terms of PEQ. Now I'm going to do the same thing for delta GM3 
but in Delta GM3, Diamond is the only species present, and we're changing from the equilibrium pressure to atmospheric pressure, so the delta P term is going to be P atmosphere minus P EQ. Again, we don't know this molar volume of diamond, so I'm going to use the density given to us in the problem statement to calculate the molar volume of diamond. When you do the conversion, you get that the molar volume is 3.42 times 10 to the negative 6 meters cubed per mole. And then we have all the numbers we need, so plug that into the expression for delta GM3. Now that we have both delta GM3 and delta GM1 all in terms of PEQ, we can go up here and insert them into this equation where the total change in molar gas free energy of the process was given to us earlier. So at the fixed temperature of 25 degrees Celsius and at one atmosphere, delta GM is going to be equal to 2,866 joules per mole. So if we plug this in to the equation we solved up here, and the two expressions we have now for delta GM1 and delta GM3, we'll get one equation with the only unknown as equilibrium pressure. From here, all we need to do is use some algebra, and we'll find that the equilibrium pressure is equal to 1.517 times 10 to the ninth pascals. And that is our final answer. So at a typical room temperature, you would have to increase the pressure of graphite to 1.517 times 10 to the ninth pascals in order to change graphite to diamond. I hope you learned something from this video and that it helped you understand how to solve the problem. If you like this video, leave a like and subscribe. We'll be posting weekly videos for homework help in Chemi 211 at Purdue University.